Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Smile. It's a horror movie recently released in streaming. I do not remember which platform it was released in, but I had access to it. This is a horror movie that I heard good things about. Uh, definitely heard a lot more about the marketing of this film, which I, I found to be uh, really interesting and uh, effective. It may, definitely made me excited to see this movie. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty good horror movie, I would say. Uh, there's been some some better horror movies recently. Uh, obviously, watching and reviewing movies like Barbarian or even Nope or The Red Phone, The Black Phone, Black Phone. Uh, I would say all of those movies are better than Smile. Uh, this movie I did enjoy, but it does have I have criticisms of this movie. Uh, and uh, it's a shame uh, because I think with a few tweaks, this movie could have been a lot better. Uh, but it was a good movie, a very interesting movie discussing uh, trauma as so many movies and TV shows are really uh, discussing have themes related to trauma, to family trauma, to how trauma is passed from one person to the next. How it's it's kind of this uh, it's almost like a virus in a lot of ways. How trauma can be contagious. The idea that hurt people hurt people is a big aspect of this movie. Smile, and uh, it's a movie written and directed by Parker Finn. So excited to see what they do next because I did I I thought it was an interesting concept. Obviously, like many horror films, are able to use horror as a metaphor uh, for other things and to talk about deeper subjects uh, through the lens of a horror film. And I thought this one did a really interesting job to illustrate how trauma is kind of passed on and to have a, an antagonist, a monster in a way, uh, that uh, moves in similar ways. So I did appreciate that. And, of course, the smile aspect of it, very creepy. They nail the very creepy. It's like a, a very specific kind of smile that they nail that is a, like a knowing smile of sinister things about to happen. And uh, so they did nail that. But I would say that the idea of the smile in this movie, that knowing look of impending doom right this this like dark uh like sadomasochist kind of like excitement in tragedy that's about to happen doesn't necessarily tie in to the overall themes of of what this movie is also talking about in trauma like that smile isn't necessarily something people would associate with somebody who has trauma or who has who has been traumatized who is uh causing trauma to somebody else uh so in that case in that instance i would say that is a weak point right where the smile is almost a gimmick the way they were able to utilize the smile as a way to market this movie was brilliant but how it ties in with the messaging of this movie, I felt like it was weak. And maybe there's a way to do it better. Maybe there's, maybe that's something that could have been fixed in, in writing. I, I definitely feel like it was an aspect of this movie that I expected to see more of. Right? You have a movie smile. You see what that is, what that means in this movie when a person gives that smile. And... Maybe I would have appreciated it more if it was more present in the movie. Uh, because you also have characters kind of going through uh, a descent into madness, right? They're having a lot of paranoid delusions. And in those delusions is when they see the person with the smile, like they will envision somebody that's standing in front of them uh, having that smile at them. And that being part of why they're going crazy that nobody else sees it. Maybe if like 
Like there's specific scenes where if like all of the characters who were present in this hallucinate, this delusional hallucination, uh, paranoid delusions, if all like there was a scene where the main character is at a party, a birthday party, and she sees one person sitting down that nobody else sees that has that smile. But if she then looked at everybody and all of the people, these friends, family, people that she know, if all of them had that smile, it would have, one, intensified the creepiness of everything, but also utilized that smile in a way that I feel would maybe would have made it a little bit more needed and useful and, and like necessary for this film that's called Smile, but really a movie about trauma and how trauma passes on, right? Which, you know, that smile isn't necessarily indicative of somebody who is dealing with trauma or any, like, it's definitely a smile that has a very specific purpose to it. Um, So in that way, that kind of knocked this movie down, I would say, in my opinion of it. But the performances were great. Uh, this is led by Sosie Bacon, the child of Kevin Bacon, uh, a great actress. I've seen her in a few things here or there, but I believe this might be the first thing I've seen her as the star uh, and her playing this character that is going through this descent into madness. This person that's having these paranoid delusions, these moments of of like imaginary things that are happening that aren't actually happening and I enjoyed her performance. I thought she was amazing. I can't wait to see what she does next. It was, sadly, it was very refreshing to see a female actress who is able to act with her face because her face isn't mostly paralyzed like most, like the trend is with most females in general, whether they're actresses or not. The trend of Botox and things that are, are injected into women's faces to keep up with some ridiculous beauty standard in society where they intentionally paralyze the majority of their facial muscles so they don't move. And in a movie, for an actor to give a performance, it's sad when you notice that somebody can actually give facial feet use their face as one of the tools to enhance their performance so i appreciated that as well i appreciated sosie bacon's uh, ability to move the muscles in her face loved that for, for, sad, sadly it's a refreshing thing to notice in a movie let's take a little break from the show to promote i figured out a way on my website to offer prints for every single painting so if you go to a painting you can buy the original painting or you can buy a print for everything artwork that you don't want to spend a hundred dollars plus on nine by 12 inch ink painting on paper hundred dollars for the original one-of-a-kind piece of artwork paintings range in price depending on their size the eight by ten print twenty dollars available in the store at inspireddisorder.com and now let's get back to the show I also love seeing Cal Penn in a movie. Anytime he's in anything, I enjoy that. So he's a small role in this, kind of plays her boss. Uh, She plays a a therapist working in a hospital dealing with mental illness, uh, mental health. And so many characters in this movie are like just have zero respect, have a complete lack of respect or empathy for mental health for people who are having mental health problems right and it's and it's because this movie is dealing with mental health as a major theme trauma specifically being that that type of mental health issue people having mental breakdowns having paranoid delusions but then on the outside seeing people in law enforcement and just in general life having a very flippant attitude towards mental health uh, is definitely, I think it's, in this movie, I think it's intentionally used to provide contrast in those people who are not focused on the real issues of what's going on versus what Sosie Bacon's character's profession is to help people, right? Because she has family trauma with 
we find out with the the mental illness, mental health issues her mom had with the suicide that her mom uh, attempted or succeeded in. I, I kind of forget that detail. I think she she succeeded in how that broke up their family uh, and how she has this distance between her and her sister and her sister's family. So I think those attitudes towards mental health in this movie are intentional and illustrate what definitely a portion of our society, uh, how they view mental health in general, right? Anybody like there's a huge portion of our society that think any kind of acknowledgement of mental health is just a weakness, right? They don't acknowledge mental health as something that should be unless guns are being used to kill people then they will blame mental health and not a gun but as far as curing mental health as far as people getting help for mental health as far as trying to offer services for people who need help with their mental health uh, there is a complete uh, lack of any care or concern which i think in addition to I think that is part of why certain characters are so flippant towards the idea of mental health or somebody having a mental health issue. I mean, it's a massive issue in our society and how it's treated where somebody's having a mental break and police officers are just sent to go, in many cases, terrorize a person that is already in a bad mental place. Like, they are not there to... They don't show up to help, right? You... It, anybody that thinks cops showing up at a situation are there to provide help don't know what's happening in the news <laughs> throughout the history of policing. Uh, it, it, they, they must get all their viewpoints of how police act based on TV shows and movies versus the reality of how police officers act and respond to situations where people are in need of help. Uh, in many cases, in too many cases, uh, a person who is in need of mental help and is sent police officers are pretty soon after uh, no longer alive due to the actions of those police officers who were sent to, quote unquote, help. Um, so, you know, it's, this movie's got a lot of that stuff, which I found all that stuff interesting. You know, I, once you kind of find out the rules of what's going on, what's going on in general, uh, what's causing this character to have the descent into madness, causing them to have these paranoid delusions, and seeing the rules of this monster, right? And how, like, people are possessed. Basically, like, the smile indicates a possession, right? If you're seeing the smile, that means that you are you are about to be infected by the possession, right? You're about to be, it's about to transfer into you or it's getting close for you to uh, expel that, that uh, demon or whatever it is, right? And how the demon is passed from person to person is through trauma, right? From somebody witnessing trauma, that person who experienced the trauma is now now infected with that monster right super interesting idea right a lot of horror movies have that kind of you know i think was it falling not falling down falling thinner there's there i, there, I think there's a stephen king one where it's this kind of being that that's uh passed from person to person and this one the way it's done is through trauma and you know that's a great way to communicate you know, that larger theme of how trauma spreads in real reality, right? From people witnessing trauma, from people witnessing a death, a traumatic death, whether it's from suicide or from murder, and how that trauma infects them and changes them in their life and can destroy them mentally. But having that as a as kind of a rule for this this horror villain to to travel from person to person, very interesting. So it's like Sosie's character, her, she has a patient. The patient you know, says she's suffering from these things, the smile, somebody wearing a fake face, all these things. She ends up killing herself in front of Sosie. Now Sosie's infected with that thing. And to get away from it, 
there's been one survivor and that one survivor figured out that if you kill somebody it will pass that on to whoever witnesses the murder right because it still needs trauma and a death is a, a one of the more most traumatic things you can see to see somebody die in front of you and that trauma that 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 event is what allows this being to pass so either you kill yourself or you kill somebody else either way you need to have a witness to that and that's when it passes so super interesting there's some character relationships in this movie that i kind of came out of nowhere right her character what's so what's her instead of uh rose cotter is sosie's character's name so rose has a fiance trevor which is like and he can't deal with this like any kind of hiccups in this perfect life that he has he can't deal but there's this like relationship she has with this cop that feels like it comes out of nowhere right like he kind of hits on her one day at at her job and the receptionist like you know she's she's got a fiance right or she's married i don't remember and he's like yeah whatever so it just seems like he's a cop who's likes her and is trying to hit on her but then later on she goes to him for help and it's like they have this history together like maybe they dated before she got engaged or married or whatever but that's like not communicated at all it's just all of a sudden she's like confiding in him and talking as if they've had this relationship before and it's like what is going on the way he acts at the very end of this film not reacting to what's going on in front of him not attempting in any way to stop the events that are happening at no point attempting to st st stop the 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 events leading up to the tragedy or once the tragedy starts like at no just kind of just standing there and watching it frozen i don't buy it i don't buy it let's take a little break from the show to promote the benefits of inspired disorder plus so you go inspireddisorder.com slash plus sign up five dollars a month you get to binge the full week of the ray taylor show ad free you get to watch all of the live painting videos i do you get a special members only discount and deals for all of the artwork and merch that i sell you also get the complete podcast back catalog of every podcast i've ever produced hundreds of episodes countless different podcasts you also get access to my personal blog a new blog comes out every week in addition to that you get my creative writing that i'm releasing you also get access to asking me anything 14 years of experience podcasting i've been creating art my entire life i've been using photoshop since middle school and you can contact me to ask me questions about that or anything else so those are the benefits for signing up for inspired disorder plus and now let's get back to the show so there's some aspects of it that I didn't really get. It's like you have this relationship or even just like as a human, you're seeing somebody do this to themselves. Clearly, you know what the next steps are and you take no action to stop it. Right. I know he's a cop, so cops are pretty great at just watching tragedies unfold in front of them while they do nothing. But. It just, it just, it's, it's, you know, the fact that this movie ends like a tragedy is interesting, right? It's like, oh, it's still good. Like, it clearly leaves it open for a smile, too. But the way it happens, I felt, was, it, I don't know. I had problems with it. So there's a few things I had problems with. But overall, I thought her performance, her descent into madness, trying to figure out what's happening to her, trying to figure out how to stop it. I enjoyed all that stuff. I enjoyed the themes of trauma and and how that relates to the quote unquote rules of this movie of how this monster kind of translates. I thought the character design when you actually see when that 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 trauma is like visualized that monster is visualized at the end of this movie. I love the way that looked right. The character design is great. Um, the the moments of visual effects are pretty great. I enjoyed that as well. Um, so there's a lot of things I did enjoy about this movie, but then there's big misses. I think it has too, which it feel like just really could have just been tweaked, right? Set up that there was a relationship there before somehow, right? 
like he goes like he, it could have been so easy like him the receptionist is going it's like all she had to do was like you had your chance bro right and that already implies that there's a history between him and rose right so later on in the movie when she goes to him for help and it has like this clear that they had a thing at one point it wouldn't be out of nowhere and at the end have him he could attempt but fail to intervene but to have him frozen before you know before the you know everything goes up in flames is just i don't know it it just it 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 felt miss it didn't feel like i don't know i didn't buy it right like just no reaction at all right but i guess you know reality sometimes people freeze but still i mean i can understand freezing if you were to witness the ignition of that event but not to see the slow motion turn you know what's going to happen you see what she just poured all over herself like you know what's going to happen right you know the steps are involved of what she's doing and you're just standing there watching i didn't i didn't really buy it um but yeah other than that i really enjoyed this movie i thought it was fun and uh you know it what i really got the most out of this movie is that i want to see sosie bacon do more acting right i'd love to see her in other lead roles and if they do another movie maybe a budgetary increase would allow the writer director to maybe iron out some issues maybe there was cuts made in this movie that led to those minor quibbles that these these minor things that like super noticeable and took me out right because i don't want to when i'm watching a movie right i'll I'll go along with whatever you set up the rules of whatever i'm i'm there but like when there's things that can happen that take me out it sucks right because i don't want to be taken out of the movie i want to go on this ride and uh you know a few a few small things minor minor quibbles with this movie that overall i thought was i thought was fun not my favorite horror movie of the the year you know not you know it's not a bad horror movie by any stretch of the imagination um definitely does some interesting stuff so i appreciate that right it, it's it, it's it, it the execution is where the failure was not the intention the intention i thought of this movie was great so check it out it's uh smile do it new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on youtube and everywhere our podcasts are found binge the full week over at inspired disorder.com slash plus buy ray taylor show merch over at inspired disorder.com have a wonderful day everybody peace out today, today is, is the, the day, day where, you where you wake, wake up and you realize, realize that everything that you've been dreaming about everything that you've been wanting every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real dreams can come true what you manifest in your mind you can bring to reality